Welcome, welcome, people. My name is Clint, Clint Beastwood. If you're new to me, Clint, if you're old to me from the Dread Dash podcast, uh, due to the coronavirus, everything like that, me and Malcolm are not together. We aren't separated. Don't get scared. Calm down. Everything like that. The Dread Dash podcast is still a thing. We're still official and we're still on. Um, it's just a lot of lockdown stuff going on right now, so it's hard for us to record. Um, this is the only one and only time I'm really going to say something about that. But, uh, but yeah, that's what's going on right now. So, a lot of pause and a lot of halting. Uh, me and Malcolm are still probably live streaming the Division 2 um, and probably whatever other games that we got in our, you know, in the tuck. So, that's probably what we're doing right now. Just a lot of live streaming on YouTube and everything like that. Malcolm's on Twitch. Make sure to go follow him. X, is it XNight98? XNight89. <clears throat> Um, make sure to go follow him on Twitch and everything like that. But yeah, that's what we're doing right now. Just because it's coronavirus, it got us separated. So it's kind of hard to record. Uh, a lot of lockdowns, a lot of restrictions and everything like that. I know everybody is telling us to either use Zoom or like other programs like that. But it's kind of hard because Malcolm is, um, he doesn't really have an official, official computer like that or official, official laptop like that. And plus it's hard for him probably to get like a space where he can like get like the best type of silence <laughs> seeing that we have kids and stuff like that so it's kind of hard for uh, for that to go on i know a lot of people have been su- suggesting that but it's just something hard to do like when you got kids like i'm all, i know you'll probably think because we got this nice big green screen in the back and everything like that like we in the studio or something like that nah we in the basement <laughs> so so it's kind of hard just to like get a little piece of silence or whatever the case is uh for him to record and everything like that and plus he doesn't have like an official official laptop he's building his own computer his own master computer right now to take over the world right now so it's just what it is what it is so you just get me for right now um this may last a month this may last a little less than a month we don't know yet um when everything gets a little more clearer on our restrictions and stuff like that in the city or whatever the case is, uh, that's when we'll start moving around and everything like that, just to let everybody know. But, uh, yeah, this is just that one intro video on why you just see me and not Malcolm because we pretty much do everything out of my crib or whatever the case is. So that's just what it is right now. Uh, so, yeah, don't get worried. Dread Dance Podcast still live. We're still here. We're not breaking up. The, the the boys are still back in town and everything like that. Like, we're not breaking up or anything like that. So, um, but, yeah. Just wanted to give you guys that little heads up, notice and everything like that. So, uh, I don't know if I did the intro or not, but enjoy this video, whatever this may be. And we back! Welcome to another episode or another review coming from your boy Clint of the Dread Dash Podcast. Uh, today I'm going to talk about Westworld Season 1. Um, I know Westworld is one of those shows, I think it's on HBO. Um, I was big into Game of Thrones and why Game of Thrones is on that big ass hiatus or the case is. I probably should have been keeping up with this Westworld joint. Uh, a lot of people have been telling me to watch this. A lot of people have been giving me great reviews about it. And I think season three is either out or on the way out by the time I drop this review over the case is, so I got a lot of catching up to do. Um, but let me just jump off by saying Westworld has probably some of the best actors in probably like the first three to four maybe episodes that I've probably seen in my entire fucking life. And... A lot of people tell me that the show is good, but nobody ever told me how good the acting was. Um, so a little synopsis about what Westworld pretty much is. Because when I first jumped into it, I knew it had something to do with like Western life, but also like futuristic. I didn't know exactly what the whole thing of it was. But now that I've dived into it, um, I love it. It's pretty much, I want to call it the simulation experience, but it is a simulation experience. It still doesn't um, fully factor how the everyday people actually go into this whole world i guess it's this own i guess it's his own land or something like that or this guy owns like a lot of land and he can build and do what it as he wants to okay sis but um so westworld it is pretty much a simulation or a it's like a rpg-esque type living life or the case is it's pretty fucking dope um I was already immersed into it, like, once I found out that it was, like, 
like that in the first place. But um, so it costs us forty thousand dollars a day, um, to go experience, to be in a western, pretty much to choose your own path. It's kind of a vacation for some people. It's kind of a um, an escape. It's probably like to see like. A lot of people in the scenarios or the case is a lot of people they say this a lot during the whole first season, like a lot of people are only there just either to fuck or kill warm bodies, and that's about it. That's what a lot of experiences are for some people, uh, depending on your poison or the case is. But um in this first season a lot a lot goes on, like so I'm not gonna even be able to mention like a lot of the characters because this would probably need like a episode by episode breakdown. I'm not not doing that. I'm just doing a straight full out uh season one kind of review or just like talk through over the case is um but in westworld you pretty much just, it get to live the western life like it's shootouts it's bank robberies or it's uh, saloon robberies it's fucking um cowboys and indians it's fucking desperados there's people out in the fucking far far woods it's fucking unknowns it's literally um what's the damn name of the game uh red dead redemption you can actually like live that life like like in current times and it's uh it's pretty fucking dope um as a regular human being um you cannot be hurt by the npcs there, there are a lot of npcs <laughs> um but you cannot be hurt by the npcs that's that's the initial um gist of going to the west world case is uh that's what they let you know later on in, in the um in the show though that that changes a lot um but yeah uh so yeah, you get to you get to spend your money, you get to live that life of if you ever want to be in the fucking western. Um, and my my thing is, I was surprised why it was uh like a western, but I guess the guy that um designed everything, whatever case is, or actually two guys that designed the whole thing. I guess they that was their time, or that's the type of things that they liked at the time, whatever case is. So that's how that happened. Um, but all in all, all this together, it's pretty much a story of I want to call them. I forgot exactly what they call them, but I'm just going to call them clones. I think they probably call them clones. I'm not sure. But these clones are NPCs. Um, a few of them were made by a guy named Bernard, which um, eventually we found out his name is um, Arthur, I think. I think it's Arthur. Um, and also his partner, uh, Robert Ford. <clears throat> these two, they start a business. They start this West, this West world. Um, and in doing so, there are, they started from like mechanical type clones or the case is, and then they kind of updated and upgraded to these actually like, um, I don't even know what the hell to call them because like they have, cause the mechanical ones, they have blood also, I think they might have blood. One gets cut open later on in the, in the series or the case is, and I think she bled, but I'm not sure. But they go on to these pretty much body bags, just loose body bags. They they have like skin, organs, blood, like just like a regular human being, but they don't have like they're programmed to be like emotionless or whatever cases. So they're programmed to have they they want them to be programmed. But um this is literally just a big ass video game. <laughs> especially to a lot of the people that come visit the park, especially to some of the um the workers who maintain the park and everything like that. Like a lot of people have these ideas that um like they have that that much control. Like even the NPCs at one time, they know these the regular people that keep the maintenance of the park and own the park and do all this of the park where the case is, they see them as gods. Um until eventually there are a few rogue NPCs that find out like these are not gods; these are just mortal men, and they pretty much um they kind of take over uh to some extent or the case is uh the first season all in all man it's it's fucking awesome um it's kind of hard to explain everything because so much happens man like there are just certain characters that just stand out like there's a character named Maeve um she owns well no she does own but she um. She's a prostitute, or the case is whatever the fuck they used to call them back in the West days, or the old West days, or the case is. But um, she's pretty much the the household lady that takes care of all the other girls that sleeps with all the other men and shit like that. That's pretty much what her thing is. Uh, she's a caretaker or something like that. I, I don't know the particular term, or the case is, but yeah, she does that. Um, 
There's Dolores. Uh, like I said earlier, there's Bernard. Um, it's Ed Harris. He play, he plays the man in black who um I forgot his fucking name. I think it's it's something William. It's Billy or William. That's who that's who Ed Harris plays. Um his backstory is fucking wild as shit. Uh got my girl Tessa Thompson in there. You got her too late though. I needed more Tessa Thompson. Hopefully season two is probably a lot more. I'm not really sure. I haven't dived into it yet. Um we got a guy named Teddy. Man, Teddy has the probably the most roughest fucking life that you could probably think of. Like he's died over at least ten thousand times, <laughs> and it's all different scenarios. Cause the way that uh, man, cause the way that the the show works or the game of Westworld works, like um, every choice that you make can take you down a different storyline. So this guy has probably been down all type of different storylines, and the thing is, like once they die, they start all over from beginning and everything like that. And you really don't get the gist of that until like probably the the second episode, baby, because um. There's this guy that is it's pretty fucking funny because I didn't know what the fuck the guy was there for until, like, one of the regular people came into Westworld and actually shot his ass. So it's literally, like, once you die, you start all over as an NPC or a case. It's just like a regular NPC, I guess, in some games. But um, in Westworld, there's a guy. Like, as soon as you get off the train, he bumps into you. And you don't know what the fuck is supposed to happen with this guy, but he literally, he pumps into everybody that gets off the train and probably eventually down the line, probably like episode three or four of the case is you find out like this guy is only there to have a shootout with you and lose. That's this guy's whole MO. That's the only thing that this guy does. Um, and it, it's fucking funny as hell because you see Teddy and him bumping to each other, but if NPC to NPC interact, um, nothing happens with this guy, but, if uh if the NPC that I'm talking about bumps into like a regular person in case is it's supposed to be a shootout and he's supposed to like get shot and die in cases that's his whole premise that's the only thing he's supposed to does. Um. Also with these um uh, NPCs um they can be reconfigured. Also, so say that um okay so this has happened to me Maeve a couple of times actually probably once or twice I can't actually remember. But she used to be like a farm woman, uh, had a daughter, everything like that. And now she's this barlesque woman or this bar woman or prostitute, whatever the case is. That's what she does now. So, like, they could be reprogrammed over and over and over again to the point that um, that some of them even start to lose their, like, sensibility or consciousness or some of them get a conscious and like start having dreams with cases. And that what, that's a big, big part of season one, like a few of the original NPCs or cases. I know they called something else or cases, but I'm calling them NPCs. That's, that's literally what the hell they are. A few of them gain consciousness and they have dreams and they remember. And that's the one thing that none of them, none of the regular people or none of the investors or none of the board members or none of the people that keep maintenance on the NPCs, that's something that they never would think that would happen. But it did. And that's, that's the part that riles up this whole first season. Um, so it, it's a lot of, it's a lot of undermining shit going on. Like from the point of Dolores being the first, it, not the first, probably not the first, but probably the oldest NPC of the Westworld of case is. Um, Maeve probably being probably the second or case is. But um, the first would probably be um, Arnold. Yeah, that's his name, Arnold, not Arthur. I'm sorry about that if I said that earlier. Um, Arnold, uh, which he kind of lives a separate life. This is the part that fucked me up. It actually twisted me. I, hopefully, I'm not spoiling it for anybody. I'm not sure. Uh, this came out in 2016. I'm late on it, so I'll probably be saying some stuff that some of you have already heard or some of you probably could just probably skip a little bit. But um, Arnold is Bernard, and when you figure that out, it fucks your head up because the way that he was interacting with um, the other NPCs, uh, the regular people, um, just anybody of the case is, that, that would – that wouldn't even have come to your mind. Like that was a that was a real crazy twist right there, and it made me it made a lot of questioning go on because there are employees in this whole world of the cases in the regular world, not just the West world in the regular world, and seeing that uh, Arnold or Bernard of the cases is it's actually one of the NPCs and can be programmed and can be controlled by whoever. 
um, you see that happen, it just makes you think like, damn, how many of these workers are actually NPCs? Like, because we never actually get to see, because that's probably something in season two that I'm not um, there yet on, but we actually never see the outside world, outside of Westworld, or outside of the confinements of the space where people are, or the maintenance people or the regular people are living and stuff like that before they enter the West world. So we never get to see the outside world and something that, um, Dolores actually says probably like in the ending episodes with Casey, she says, um, like everybody figures that I want out or out is the way to go over Casey is, but for some reason that you all, the regular people keep coming into our world, uh, looking for an escape or looking for something or something like that. So she's like questioning, like what's so great about the out, uh, outer world of Casey is. So we never actually get to see, like, because this is like, I'm assuming this is like far, far in the future. We never get it like a year or like a time or space where the case is, like where this is happening or something like that. So it, I'm I'm assuming like this is like way, way out into the future. So my thing is, this is probably like, it's probably desolate as fuck out, like some bombs or some nuclear shit that probably happened in the fucking real world or something like that. And that's why people come and escape to the West world. I don't fucking know. They didn't you get that far in the first season with case is, but that's just me assuming uh, what I'm assuming with case is. Um, but this this show is fucking awesome as shit. Um, I'm definitely starting season two like ASAP because I still got questions I need answered because um, like a lot of the because eventually down the line the NPCs the they do start killing the humans or the case is. There's a whole story behind like it would take me at least an hour to explain the whole fucking story of the whole first season of the West world. But just know the NPCs can eventually kill human. And it's really weird because like either they're just cause NPCs do try to kill humans. Um, and earlier episodes with case is, but they don't do that much damage, but it hurts the, the regular people, but it doesn't do enough damage to like actually kill them. Aside when if a human tries to shoot an NPC, like they can die instantly or the case is they could die wherever they shot a at or like they feel that pain instantly. Um, but later on you get to see the NPCs actually killing the humans. And I don't know if that's because of a program or that's, I don't know, like sensitivity type things like that, that, that they can change or whatever the case is. I'm not really sure. They didn't really explain that as far as like, as I'm thinking of the case is, um, but you do get to see the NPCs. They 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 do take over, and that's like the last episode. But we don't actually get to see the takeover. So like, shit happens like in the storyline. Or the case is like you can already like if you're watching this show and you see the NPCs reacting the way they're reacting. Like that's not a spoiler to, to know that the um that the NPCs are gonna take over. But the spoiler, but the whole story before all that happens, like. Cause you get a little, you get a little prequel, you get current time and like the shit that goes on, like during all the storylines and everything like that, that shit is crazy. Um, I'm trying to see what else I can explain to make this shit. Cause I don't, I don't think I have to convince you all to go watch this shit. Um, I just wish somebody would have told me how good the acting was. Like everybody has told me how good the show is. They never just, they never said why though. But like now that I'm caught up, on season one of the case is I understand why because like now I have more questions like because I even have questions like can the humans kill other humans inside of the west world because um that never happened like nobody no other human tried to kill other human um they never even tried to like hurt them over the case is so I don't even know um if if that's possible or like what would happen and also, um, I don't know the time restrictions or anything like that on the Westworld because um, one guy has literally been there, um, which is Billy or William. He's been there for the last 30 fucking years. So, I don't know. I guess because eventually down the line, I'm not going to spoil it with cases, but eventually down the line, he has his reasoning for being there. He also has his um, motives and his... Um, he has the assets or we know if he can probably afford to do this with case is, but, um, he's been there for 30 fucking years, like playing every different storyline, doing everything that he could possibly do because, um, there's this thing it's called a maze or the case is. And this whole time, every time that he gets close to the maze, 
a NPC tells him that the, the maze isn't meant for him or this isn't for you, whatever the case is. And he's literally been spending his last 30 years there. So I don't know if there's a time limit on this um, or like like just what's the limitations to this because eventually he should have got kicked out. $40,000 a fucking day. That's a lot of fucking money to spend one day in Western world. So imagine that for over 30 fucking years. Um, there, there are ways that they track. Um, matter of fact, they track the NPCs, but I don't know if they can track the human beings. So that probably is a problem in case is. But those are just questions that's probably not going to get answered in season two because the last episode, shit got so real. It probably doesn't even fucking matter. <laughs> just to be fucking honest with you. Um, but yeah, man, season one of fucking Westworld. I just wish people would have told me how good the acting was because when you see the people acting in this man uh when they're like being either reconfigured or shut down or they're like trying to get their status over case is or a synopsis of like everything that just happened man the acting in this shit is so a1 bro like i really thought like half of these fucking actors were actual robots bro like the way they were acting or like the way they were twitching the way their mouth was mouth was moving like it was just a lot of reactions like like fuck like for these actors to be like doing the shit that they're doing man it's ridiculous and this is like early on in the first two or three episodes i thought like the fucking actors of this shit were probably some of the best actors that i've ever seen just based off like they're supposed to be acting like robots and i don't know if some of that shit is cg in hands or in case it was just all them or whatever cases but man it was some good ass acting like early early on um what else? Uh, hopefully I'm not... Well, of course I'm missing something. I don't want to spoil it because some of y'all might be some late bloomers like me. So y'all might see it after y'all see this review or something like that. Um, but man, this show is fucking amazing. Um, so yeah, uh, season three is is probably out now or it's on the way out. I'm not really sure, but it's, but this this show is fucking amazing. Westworld season one definitely get two thumbs up, like way the fuck up, because this shit was dope as shit. I was interested every time. Um, it is one of those smart ass shows, so like some things might go over your head, you might miss something, but the way it, the way that the story is so set up, or whatever the case is, it does. I don't want to say it loses you, but it draws you back in to like say, oh okay, that's what he's talking about, or the case is. So like some of the stuff might go over your head. This is one of those like kind of smart fucking shows, and it might, you know. Might miss some shit or the case is, but the story and the writing is so well that fucking, um, you might just catch back on, like, just like that. Cause I did get lost like one or two times, but other than that, like, I was, I was there with the storyline the whole time. Um, but yeah, man, that's all I got, man. Uh, like I said, uh, Westworld gets season one definitely gets two thumbs up. Um, a lot of people have been telling me either the acting either gets better or worse in season two. I'm not sure. But I got to watch season two for myself to know. But off rip, uh, this show had drawn draw me in from the acting alone in just season one. So that's why I'm at with it. Um, but yeah, man, I hope y'all enjoyed this review. Hopefully I didn't spoil anything or too much for anybody. Uh, hopefully this review draws the people in who are late bloomers like myself to Westworld. And everybody keep asking why it's uh, telling you that it's such a good show, but not telling you why. Um and yeah man this this is great the story is great the writing is great the acting is great a one great like so it's a good ass show so go check this out if y'all get a chance man uh, if you haven't so hope y'all enjoyed this review this has been my Westworld season one review my name is Clint and I'm out Dread Ass Podcast if you like this review make sure to like subscribe and hit the bell also in the description we got a Discord. And if you liked this review, once again, make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell. My name is Clint, Dread Desk Podcast. Hope y'all enjoyed. Peace out.